Hey everybody, I'm back. I'm Libby DeLucian with Woot Recruit, the only recruiting process designed specifically for the high turnover industry. So if you're in lawn care, cleaning, residential or commercial, construction or roofing, you name it. If you're a service-based industry, we are here for you. Again, uh, this is the Woot Recruit YouTube channel where we're gonna ask some engaging questions that's gonna spark some interest when it comes to recruiting, company, culture, retaining, hiring, whatever you call it, uh, we're gonna dive into that. And so today I have a guest, Chelsea, do you wanna introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Chelsea Wood and I own a cleaning company in Granbury named Spotless Shine. Awesome. And so I always ask everybody the same question when we get started and it is, what is the number one hiring mistake you've ever made? I'm kind of torn between hiring friends and hiring when desperate. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's go with hiring friends. Um, so I would say sometimes when you hire friends, it is really hard because you have to set those boundaries of being a business and being a boss and then being a good friend. So that is definitely the hardest. Um, and then, you know, if you trust your friend with your business and they don't, produce the way that you want them to, it typically leads to hard feelings. Um, and it's very hard to separate those two. Yeah. Um, I think that with hiring friends or family can be both. I think their level of what we expect from them is one thing and the level we expect from them is another and they're not aligned. I will agree. So um, I've had my ex-husband work for me and my expectations of him were way higher than any other employee because I'm like, well, you should know you, you should know, like, come on, you know how much effort I put into this. You should be doing the same amount. So um, I will say that that, that is a big, big factor. Yeah. And I have a lot of family that works for me. I have my mother works with me. My sister works with me. My son works with me. My husband works with me. And, you know, I I've done it in the past and failed epically with my ex relationship. Uh, I mean, epically that it, I didn't want to work with family or friends, but then I had to realize that it wasn't necessarily them. It was me. <laughs> I didn't set clear boundaries. I didn't have a clear job description. Um, I wouldn't have difficult conversations and I expected so much of them that it wasn't actually even fair. Agreed. So, um, you know, I love this topic because I think if you can make it work, if you can make it work with, with clarity and, um, with on both sides, it can be a beautiful thing. Now I love now working with my mom, my sister, my husband, my son, I, we, we all get along great. But we have very specific rules. And you, gonna... you have good time management skills. So you, you know, you were like, okay, we have a routine. This is personal stuff that we're going to do. We're going to be intentional. Yes. And this is work. I have not been able to balance that yet. It's work, 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 crash, personal, then back to the work. <laughs> yeah. So, so that is and... one of my things that I know that I need to work on. And it's um, not like I have a work-life balance. It's that I've known how to integrate my life mm -hmm. and my work together. So there feels like there's more balance because work-life balance is a crock of doo-doo. That's me. good to know. Good to know. Um, <laughs> or it's like saying time management. I'm like, you can't manage something you have no control over because you cannot control how fast or slow time moves. Um, and it took me years to learn these things because I've fed into everything else. Like, oh, I should have work-life balance. And you're like, well, what does that really mean? It's different to everybody. And we're trying to feed into this thing that we think it should be. But in reality, it's what, it's only needs to be what we need it to be. So uh, with my parent, like with my mom and my sister and my son and my husband, it's funny because if it's work, it goes through work channels. So mm -hmm. like it goes through Slack or WhatsApp during work hours. Nice. If it's personal, we go through text, you know, whenever. Um, and there's no like perimeters on the time for that because mm -hmm. it's my mom. Like, but I'll literally like text my mother something through WhatsApp about, oh, when's the company quarterly meeting? And then like two seconds later, I'll go over here what and say like, oh, it? do you want to come over for dinner? Um, yeah. But we keep clear clear lines between 
our communication channels and the time of communication and how we communicate. I, if I go over for dinner, we're not talking about work. I don't want to talk about work and I don't want her to think she has to talk about work. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I've been trying to do that, especially because I generally become friends with a lot of my employees that I have become close to, especially ones who go to the management position. Um, and so I always try to remember, Hey, Am I following that 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. rule? Is it after hours? Okay, if it's after hours, then hold off on that text. Wait until the work day. Um, so you know what I do so I don't forget? I email. That's probably a good, good, good path. Because they're not checking their email. They're not expected to check your email. They're not sitting in front of a computer if it's midnight because Libby's known <laughs> to email everybody at midnight. Um. And so what I do is I go to email to say, hey, like, I don't want to forget it's top of mind for me. I'm just going to send them an email. And they all know, like, to disregard Libby's emails in the middle of the night. It's not an emergency. Well, it's not important. you can also set them to send later on. So mm -hmm. you can set them to say or to send at six o'clock on Monday morning so that it, you've already typed it out. But then, you know, it's safe because yeah. I've done that with a lot of clients where I'll get feedback and I want to respond immediately. But I'm like, no. It's after hours. We're just going to get in a battle. Let them sleep on it. That's the biggest thing I have to do when I have any type of constructive criticism or if I get upset with something is I have to sleep on it. I have to let it just simmer down instead of boiling over <laughs> um, when it comes to any kind of, you know, discussion that yeah. may not be the best or the easiest one to discuss. But, but yeah. And then. As far as like friends, I get it where we become friends with the people we work with, but there's a fine line with that. And because of the way they think about us and then the way we think about them. So my suggestion is to think of yourselves. If you like love the people you work with and you want to be close to them and that's okay. I think that's great. But I would watch the word friends. And I had to watch myself in this too, because I, I ended up getting hurt probably more than <laughs> everybody else is I come from a sports background. So I play basketball, um, growing up, I have a full size basketball court in my backyard. My son plays basketball, um, is a, the word team I think is mm -hmm. underutilized because when you're on a team, you are, you are closer than friends. When you're on a team, you understand each other. You know their movements. You know how they react. You know what they're going to do. When you're on a team, you eat dinners together and you go to team outings and you play in the game together and you practice together and you have each other's backs. And so I've had to shift from that family mentality because Your I'm team. sorry, friends, the friends kind of thing, because I have friends that come and go, but I have teammates that I've always stayed in contact with. Been able to with. count on. Nice. Because you can count on them. And you should know your teammates so well that you can just anticipate their move. Um, that's how we see those great relationships evolve, like uh, with, with the, uh, like Michael Jordan and, you know, that era of the Bulls. And um, so I always love the team and teaching our staff team versus friends. Nice. And using that sports analogy really hits home because then they understand, like, actually a team is closer than friends. I've never thought of it that way, but that does yeah. definitely make sense. So, yeah, I know that one of our employees did ask if at our next meeting we could incorporate some team building, team building yeah. skills. Um, and so, of course, I'm like, what can we do? <laughs> So you could, um, you know, dive into the background of what teams are and why being a team is a closer bond than just being friends. Mm -hmm. um, you know, team building is different to everybody. It could be culture. And so I wanted to ask you, when it comes to your company culture and the employees that you attract and retain, how did it change when you started really diving into, because we just filmed the Fearlessness podcast, mm -hmm. and you guys can catch it on that for our listeners. But she just was telling me how she changed who she, the title of her cleaners, the the mission and the vision. Was it the vision or the values? Sorry. Values. Yeah. So we yeah. have our motto is we hope to add a little shine to your day. Um, and that's just something that I thought was cute would stick because our name is Spotless Shine. 
But then we just dive a little bit deeper and we do that by serving humbly, intelligently, nicely, and exceptionally. Um, and that way it really helps the cleaners understand our values and then what we're here to do because, you know, we're cleaners, but I call my cleaners cleaning professionals. So they know why they're doing it, how to do it, and then what purpose they serve in providing those services to others. Um, and then they know how, why, I forgot what the other one was, <laughs> um, but but yeah, um, how to do it, why do they do it, and when, uh, when, no. yeah, when, well, no, when? no, it's yeah, okay. I don't know, I lost it. Um, that being said, how has that helped you with recruiting? Um, it has helped because, you know, um, we get recommended when people are looking for a job and they say, I can do cleaning. We get recommended by our staff that says, come work for us because we're a good company because you know, not only are we going to provide them a job, but we're going to provide them just a place to be in a team and a community and we care. Um, so I empower them, you know, by um, trusting them to do their job, but also giving them other tasks and duties to do other things and then just empowering them to um, you know, communicate directly to the client instead of, you know, me being the middleman. No, they have a channel that can, they can ask questions directly to that client um, or they can ask questions to the other cleaners to get resources so that they can develop their skills. Um, and we have um, detail specialists who they know, you know, you know, a little bit more. They just, you know, they can train cleaners. They have that better eye. They can do the harder tasks. They can do the detail things. So we have chandeliers that we clean that not everybody is comfortable cleaning. <laughs> we don't clean those. <laughs> <laughs> we have started, that is what we have started doing is specializing in cleaning chandeliers and the specialty metals. Um, and it took a lot of research, a lot of shaking going, I don't know if I'm comfortable doing this reaching out to other companies to see, you know, if they could do it and we could sub them out and then asking how they do it. And then just the time they couldn't get them in the time frame. So it's like, okay, well, we're accepting this challenge. And then it's like, this is really fun. Like this is a challenge and we'd like to do it. So um, now we're doing it. <laughs> and then we nice. bought, you know, bought different tools to do the things, got a scaffold kit started. We don't have the full thing, but we started, with the base of the scaffold kit um, and then, you know, talking to other, going into light fixture stores and talking to them of, okay, I have this chandelier, you know, do you guys provide the service and how do y'all do it? And they're like, Oh, well, if it has an Adelin lift, which brings it down. I'm like, what is that? Okay, cool. <laughs> so then when I go to the client's home, I'm like, does it have an Adelin lift? I'm like, Oh yeah, there's a little button that drops down. I'm like, then we can do it. Awesome. And so, you know, every company um, you're going to have those, different services you offer. So like at Organize It, we started organizing and we still organize and we added cleaning. Um, you know, you get, you're going to get those specialty services that you start to add as your company grows and you evolve and your knowledge evolves that also really help you either keep current employees or attract new employees because it's, you're giving them different opportunities like career ladders, the opportunity to make more money and specialize and try different you know, try to, to deliver different services that they may be exceptional at versus what they were hired for. So it's giving them more opportunity within the current position for them to grow as well. Yes. And that's also the thing is um, that I've outsourced somebody for the office admin and I would much rather um, keep it in-house and build them up to that position um, because that was a flop. It did not go well. Um, and they just didn't understand the company, the culture, um, you know, and where we were going with this. And they wanted to change everything. And it just wasn't jiving because they didn't grow with us and want us to continue growing. Um, they yeah. came in with, you know, that, well, I'm here to do this and this is going to benefit me instead of I've already been here. I've received benefit and I want to keep those benefits rolling to others. So um, that's something that, you know, hard, expensive lessons learned. <laughs> <laughs> 
expensive experiences. Yes, expensive experiences. <laughs> awesome. So we're coming up on 15 minutes. Chelsea, I want to thank you guys. I want to thank you so much for, be for being on today's episode. Again, I'm Libby DeLucian. It was our pleasure to guide our listeners through some effective tips on recruiting and retention when it comes to hiring and finding those great fits. Remember, transform your hiring isn't just a myth. It can be a reality that is reached. For more insights and strategies, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel or our newsletter. Until next time, keep pushing those boundaries of what you thought was possible in your recruiting process.